on this beautiful day, Aloha Sunday. We're celebrating a special hello to those of you who are joining us online. We have a really special service planned for you today with some wonderful music. So let's go ahead and get things started. And to join us in that wonderful music, will you please stand and turn your hymnals to page 398 and join us in song. I see. Son and Holy Spirit. And blessed be God's kingdom now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of thy Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. peace to God's people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of pray. Lord of all power and might, the author and giver of all good things, graft in our hearts the love of your name, increase in us true religion, nourish us with all goodness, 
and bring forth in us the fruit of good works. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated for the reading of the first lesson. The first reading is a reading from Jeremiah. Hear the word of the Lord, O house of Jacob, and all the families of the house of Israel. Thus says the Lord, What wrong did your ancestors find in me that they went far from me, and went after worthless things, and became worthless themselves? They did not say, Where is the Lord who brought us up from the land of Egypt, who led us in the wilderness, in a land of deserts and pits? in a land of drought and deep darkness, in a land that no one passes through, where no one lives. I brought you into a plentiful land to eat its fruits and its good things. But when you entered, you defiled my land and made my heritage an abomination. The priests did not say, where is the Lord? Those who handle the law did not know me. The rulers transgressed against me. The prophets prophesied by Baal, and went after things that do not profit. Therefore, once more I accuse you, says the Lord, and I accuse your children's children. Cross to the coast of Cyprus and look. Send a Kedar and examine with care. See if there has ever been such a thing. Has a nation changed its gods, even though they are no gods? But my people have changed their glory for something that does not profit. Be appalled, O heavens, at this. Be shocked. Be utterly desolate, says the Lord, for my people have committed two evils. They have forsaken me, the fountain of living water, and dug out cisterns for themselves, crack cisterns that can hold no water. The word of the Lord. Today's psalm is Psalm 81. Let us read it together responsively by whole verse. I'll start with the first verse. Sing with joy to God our strength, and raise a loud shout to the God of Jacob. I am the Lord your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt, and said, Open your mouth wide, and let the whole earth hear your glory. And yet my people did not hear my voice, and Israel would not obey me. Oh, that my people would listen to me, that Israel would walk in my ways. I should soon subdue their enemies and turn my hand against their foes. Those who hate the Lord would cringe before him, and their punishment would last forever. But Israel would have feed with the finest wheat and satisfy him with the honey of the rock. Today's second reading is from Hebrews. Let mutual love continue. Do not neglect to show hospitality to strangers, for by doing that, some have entertained angels without knowing it. Remember those who are in prison as though you were in prison with them, those who are being tortured as though you yourselves were being tortured. Let marriage be held in honor by all, and let the marriage bed be kept undefiled. For God will judge fornicators and adulterers, keep your lives free from the love of money, and be content with what you have. For he has said, I will never leave you or forsake you. So we can say with confidence, the Lord is my helper, I will not be afraid. What can anyone do to me? Remember your leaders, those who spoke the word of God to you. Consider the outcome of their way of life and imitate their faith. Jesus Christ is the same same yesterday and today and forever. Through him, then, let us continually offer a sacrifice of praise to God that is the fruit of lips that confess his name. Do not neglect to do good and to share what you have, for such sacrifices are pleasing to God. 
the word of the Lord. Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord Christ. On one occasion, when Jesus was going to the house of the leader of the Pharisees to eat a meal on the Sabbath, they were watching him closely. When Jesus noticed how the guests chose the places of honor, he told them a parable. When you're invited by someone to a wedding banquet, do not sit down at the place of honor in case someone more distinguished than you has been invited by your host. And the host who invited both of you may come and say to you, give this person your place. And then in disgrace, you'd start to take the lowest place. But when you are invited, go and sit down at the lowest place, so that when your host comes, he may say to you, friend, move up higher. Then you'll be honored in the presence of all who sit at the table with you. For all who exalt themselves will be humbled, and those who humble themselves will be exalted. Jesus also said to the one who had invited him, When you give a luncheon or dinner, do not invite your friends or your brothers or your relatives or rich neighbors in case they may invite you in return, and you'd be repaid. But when you give a banquet, invite the poor, the crippled, the lame, and the blind, and you will be blessed because they cannot repay you, for you will be repaid at the resurrection of the righteous. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Please be seated. Good morning. Good morning. So growing up in a southern household as I did, Miss Manners had a prime spot on the bookshelf pretty much right next to the Bible. And I dare say she was probably consulted more frequently. But it was fairly clear to me <coughs> that these two guiding books provided rules of living for two different spheres. Jesus did not often talk about which fork to use or how to respond to an engraved invitation, and Miss Manners spent very little time on the kingdom of heaven, which is why our gospel reading this morning is so odd. Here we find Jesus not only eating a Sabbath meal with the leader of the Pharisees and his friends, but giving him and his guests an etiquette lesson. The even weirder thing about this reading is that we find Jesus advising false humility. He doesn't tell the Pharisees to be humble, to remember not to place themselves above others. He tells them to act humble, in the hopes that people will say, oh no, you're great, move on up. It's a pretty strange thing for Jesus to say, and it doesn't exactly seem in character. So to make sense of this, first we have to understand that Jesus is not just trying to teach the Pharisees manners. As usual, there's a lot more going on. This is a two-part lesson, with part one being aimed at the guests. Jesus watches them trying to figure out who's going to sit where, all kind of jostling for the place of honor near the host, and all of them convinced of their own worthiness. And against this backdrop, he tells a parable. It's no small detail that Jesus frequently compares the kingdom of heaven to a wedding banquet. Back then, a marriage feast wasn't just a meal that happened after the ceremony, the way it is today. The wedding feast was a party that lasted for days. This was a chance for family and friends and neighbors from far and wide to all come together. And since there was no such thing as a weekend back then, and you couldn't have a wedding on the Sabbath, this was basically a vacation. This was days of endless food and drink and music and dancing and celebration with literally everybody you knew. In other words, not a bad metaphor for the kingdom. And we know from many other parables about wedding feasts, even the one that comes right after this one in the Gospel of Luke, that everyone is invited to God's table. We know there are no strings attached and there's no way to earn your spot at the table because God loves everyone. So Jesus could 
just turn this whole situation upside down like the tables of the money lenders. He could dismantle the whole idea of some people being more worthy than other people and say to all those squabbling guests, look, God loves everyone. Forget where you're going to sit. It's not that important. But he doesn't do that. He tells them instead to sit at the lowest place. Because our table is where we practice for the kingdom table. Most of our table manners and daily etiquette are a result of practice. Learning how to use and hold a fork and knife. Teaching children to say please and thank you and excuse me until it becomes automatic. Holding open a door every time you go in or out for the person behind you. You don't just learn manners once and then you're done. You have to put them into practice every day. And that is what Jesus is advising. Because the tricky thing about humility is that the instant you think you're humble, you're not. <laughs> the only way you can truly be humble is to practice. Practice putting others first, even when we think we deserve to be. Even in traffic. Practice putting others first. Practice listening to others, even when we think we have something interesting to say. Practice asking for help, even when we think it might make us look bad. Practice sitting at the far end of the table, even in the kingdom where there is no hierarchy at all. And the problem with the Pharisees this morning is not just that they're full of themselves and put themselves first, but that they have made the kingdom of heaven table in their own image instead of making their table look like the kingdom table. In Pharisee society, keeping the laws of purity was particularly important. It was the way they made sure that they would not be assimilated into the larger ruling culture. In fact, the Hebrew word for Pharisee can be translated as separate. And they believed that following the laws strictly and exactly was how they became worthy of God. And those purity laws dictated not just what you could eat, but who you could eat with. Surprise, it wasn't anyone who was unclean. So the Pharisees generally ate only with other Pharisees. And of course, the more pious you were, the better you followed the laws, the more likely you would be given a place of honor. So they're assuming that this is how God's table works as well. But God's table doesn't work that way. This table doesn't work that way. Which brings us to part two of Jesus' lesson, directed at the host. Don't just invite other Pharisees, Jesus says. Invite the poor, the crippled, the lame, and the blind. Invite the least, the overlooked, the lowest, and the forgotten. Because that is what the kingdom table looks like. Now, this would have been an absolute abomination to the Pharisees. The idea of eating with all of those ritually unclean people. Because for the Pharisees, the way to honor God is to keep the laws. The way to be worthy is to stay separate. And this is precisely why Jesus' etiquette lesson this morning is so clever. His parable does not dismantle the Pharisees' desire to please God. It redefines what pleasing God looks like. His parable doesn't dissuade the Pharisees from trying to be worthy. It explains what being worthy looks like. What Jesus is teaching the Pharisees and us this morning is that when we are guests, we get the opportunity to practice being humble to practice putting others first, to practice sitting where Jesus sits. And that is what pleases God. 
And when we are the host, we get the opportunity to practice creating a table that looks like God's table, a table where everyone is fed and everyone is honored. And that is what God finds worthy. Either way, our table is where we practice for the kingdom table. Now, it's pretty easy to sit here 2,000 years later and pat ourselves on the back a little bit for getting it right. After all, everyone is welcome at this table. And we might think that this lesson from Jesus doesn't have a ton to teach us this morning. But that, of course, would make us just like the Pharisees. So I have to give the Pharisees some credit. Much of their lives were focused on how to be a good Jew, how to please God. It impacted every area of their day-to-day existence from when they got up in the morning to when they went to bed at night. They practiced their faith a lot. And if I'm honest, most of my life is not spent focused on how to be a good Christian. Most of my life is spent trying to do my job and get meals on the table and raise my kids. And it's not all that often in the middle of all that that I'm practicing for the kingdom. Unlike people living in the first century, our secular lives are not built around practicing our faith. But like manners, you don't just become a Christian once and then you're done. You have to put it into practice every day. Which is one reason why it's so important that here at St. Matt's, we have a lot of opportunities to practice. It's why this church is so actively involved in feeding children right here in our community. It's why we stuff backpacks and full of meals and work the celebration garden out front and contribute to the food pantries in our area and why we're feeding hundreds of children at St. Matthew's School in Haiti. Because there's a saying in Haiti, a hungry belly has no ears. We all know that it's hard to learn when you're hungry and that developing brains need nutrition. But this saying drives home so much more than that. If you are hungry in Haiti, you may as well be deaf. Because hunger maims, hunger cripples. And Jesus calls us today not just to invite the hungry, the crippled, the least to the table. Jesus calls us to sit down at the end and give them the first seat at the table. Before our banquet of barbecue this afternoon, before we set up tables in the parking lot today, before we come to this table, we can first give the children of St. Matthew's rice and beans. We can practice right now being the host and being the guests that Jesus calls us to be. Because this table is where we practice for the kingdom table. Amen. 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 Now let us stand and reaffirm our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again, in accordance with the scriptures. 
he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. In peace, we pray to you, Lord God, for all people in their daily life and work, for our families, friends, and neighbors, and for those who are alone. For this community, this nation, and the world, for all who work for justice, freedom, and peace, for the just and proper use of your creation. For all who are in danger, sorrow, or any kind of trouble. For those who minister to the sick, the friendless, and needy. For the peace and unity of the Church of God. For all who proclaim the gospel and all who seek the truth. For the special. For Michael, our presiding bishop, for Susan and Jennifer, our bishops for all bishops and other ministers, for all who serve God in the church, for the special needs and concerns of this congregation, including those on our intercessory prayer list. We pray for those on our intercessory prayer list, especially the people of Ukraine. Hear us, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for all the blessings of this life. We give special thanks to God for those celebrating their birthday this week, especially Clara, Grayson, Vicki, Kathleen, Jackson, Luna, Mona, Mimi, and all others who this week begin another year of their life. We also give thanks to God for those celebrating the anniversary of their marriage especially Peggy and Reggie. We will exalt you, O God, our King. And we praise your name forever and ever. We pray for all who have died, that they may have a place in your eternal kingdom. Lord, let your loving kindness be upon them who put their trust in you. We pray to you also, for the forgiveness of our sins. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things done and left undone. And so uphold us by your Spirit, that we may live and serve you in newness of life to the honor and glory of your name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you.
right, good morning, everybody. We are so happy to have you with us. A special hello to those of you who are joining us online. Um, my, if I haven't met you yet, my name is Miriam. I work in the church office, and uh, I hope that you will um, in, indulge me for just a moment while I share a quick little story with you. So imagine for a moment that you're headed into the gym, right? And as you're walking in, there's a father and toddler son, and so you stop to hold the door open to let them go in first. Um, and they're, they're very obviously headed to the pool, right? Uh, but you're deep in thought about the workout that you have planned. So you head onto the gym floor, and the floor is crowded, right? The weightlifters are lifting their weights, and the treadmills are all busy, and the spin bikes are spinning. And, and time passes, and you're not even really sure how long it's been, but you know that the back of your shirt is soaked in sweat, your water bottle is empty, and all of a sudden, the door on the far side of the gym that leads to the pool changing room slams open. And out from that door runs this two-year-old little boy that you saw earlier. And he is shrieking and streaking, <laughs> running to the far side of the gym, just 100% naked. <laughs> and so, of course, everybody turns to stare, and a hush sort of falls over the gym, right? And it's what had been very noisy, and it just is quiet for a moment, as everyone sort of like thinks, like, are you going to do something? Am, am I going to do something? What's happening here? And then just a moment later, the door slams open again, and here comes a very wet, very red-faced father gripping a towel very tightly around his waist, and he's running after the toddler. Maybe anybody could relate to that, right? <laughs> when those toddlers escape from us. And so they're both running across the gym floor. The dad gets there. He scoops the toddler up in this arm. He's gripping his towel with a mighty hold on the other hand. And the two of them look at each other, and they just laugh. And this little boy has the sweetest little giggle that you have ever heard. But they laugh, and they walk back together into the changing room. And then as the door closes, that silence that had fallen over the gym everybody in the gym just erupts into laughter at what they got to witness this sweet, sweet, joyful moment um, between this father and son. So like the episode in the gym, sometimes joy just sneaks up on us and it just presents at a time when you least expect it and it is wonderful and it makes us feel so, so good. But other times we have to be really intentional about crafting joy and happiness in our lives. And science tells us there are four different happiness hormones that our bodies release, um, and they're highly influenced by the thoughts and activities that we have. So over the past couple of years, as we've seen people really struggle with loneliness and hardship during the pandemic, um, but here at St. Matt's, we realize that it's, it's time for a shift. And so we're really excited to say that we're gonna spend this early fall time really focusing on joy and on our mental health and how we can improve those things. So we're gonna to start tonight with our wonderful Haiti Benefit concert, and we hope that you can join us. Maybe you'll uh, bring a lawn chair or a picnic blanket. Um, we're gonna have live music. We're gonna be outside with friends, delicious food, and sharing generously. And like all of those things, I mean, that's like a, if you look those up online, it's like a target list for happiness and joy in your life. And I, I promise you that you'll come away just with such a sense of, of well-being and, and happiness in your life. So I really hope that you will join us. And then next week, we are really excited to have Reverend Mary Margaret back with us from maternity leave. And really nothing boosts the mood like a new baby right? I mean, is there anything more precious and more just, it just gives you all the butterflies, right? Of looking at a little tiny baby. And I think we might get a sneak peek of baby Mac tonight at the concert. So that's one more reason to come tonight. Um, but I really hope that you will join us each Sunday in September as we focus on joy and happiness and sharing that not only with ourselves and our own families, but with our entire community. Thanks so much for being with us today.
Thank you, Miriam. And just to very quickly piggyback on those announcements, you know that the uh, get-together tonight is, is a fundraiser for Haiti for these kids who rely on us to provide their, uh, their meals throughout the year. And uh, for many of them, it will be the only meal that they'll get during the day. Uh, so uh, if you're not able to come tonight, but you still want to give to be able to support that, obviously you can do that. You can do that right now. And if you're watching us online, uh, we'd love for you to support this, this uh uh, mission as well. And there's a link on our website, and you can just go there, click on that link, give to it. Uh, and to that end, uh, we know this came up sort of quickly, uh, fitting this in. Uh, we're looking for a good date, and this date uh, came was the best date, and it, but it uh, sort of forced it uh, very quickly. Uh, we encourage good, solid budgeting, and if you budget, you're you know you come to the end of the month and all you don't have necessarily a lot left over. Uh, but this is, I think, so important that Linda and I have both. Uh, pledged uh, to match a the largest gift up to a thousand dollars with the gift of our own. So um, we hope that although it, it is the end of the month, even though this may be in some of surprise, uh, you may have budgeted really tightly, uh, that you'll still find a way to give generously in support of this very important mission. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave Himself for us, an offering and sacrifice to God.
up your hearts. And we lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and dark angels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself, and when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself, in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ has risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, and the sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace, and at the last day bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Hallelujah. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Hallelujah. The gifts of God for the people of God.
Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food and the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God, and of God's Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, be with you and remain with you this day and always. Amen.
Will you please stand for our final hymn number 690 or text on the screens? Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia.